Hi again. As we have been looking at our five global outreach partners, I'm excited for you today to be able to hear from Pastor Matthew Akkad. He's the director of Bridges of Love Ministries. As a church, we've partnered with them for nearly 15 years. In that time, six teams have had a chance to go and minister alongside. The result of those teams have been so cool. A few things to note. One is that we were able to provide clean and accessible water to a village that was in desperate need. We've also been able to build relationship with missionaries and become monthly sponsors just to encourage them as they work among refugees and vulnerable populations. We've also had the great opportunity to sponsor or facilitate the sponsorship of seven different families, six of which are now here in Alberta. We still have one family that's yet to come, and so we would ask that you would pray that their papers would be processed quickly. Now, of all the things that we have been a part of, probably the most impactful has been the translation and distribution of books and materials that are now being used all over North Africa and the Middle East. Millions of people have heard the gospel of Jesus because of the translation that we were a part of. Tens of thousands have come to know Jesus as their personal savior. To hear more, here's Matthew. My name is Matthew Akkad and I work with uh, Bridges of Love. I'm the, the director of uh, Bridges of Love. Um, Bridges of Love started in the early 90s um, as a personal initiative. Uh, we went uh, to help in one of the schools in Lebanon, in the Bekaa Valley. And um, in 1997, it became an official non-for-profit registered. Uh, from there, we've been uh, moving from one community to the other because we've seen that uh, uh, there was a need in that area. So we moved to another school in the Bekaa Valley and then uh, northeast uh, where uh, the ministry just started to grow with time. We work with uh, underprivileged communities uh, with uh, b providing basic needs, uh, um, education. Uh, we also work uh, with uh, children ministries, women ministries, and uh, even men's ministry. So um, that has been there since 1997, like I said, and it's been going until now. I also would like to take um, a second to thank Crossroads for the partnership we've had for the past, for over 13 years now. Uh, we've been partnering on several projects together. Uh, we partnered on uh, producing a printed material that was uh, printed and distributed in, uh, um, in Turkey, uh, Lebanon, Syria, um, even uh, Egypt and uh, Iraq. Um, we've also partnered with Crossroads to produce an audio production and a translation into Arabic. Um, and we distributed over, I think over the years, over 250,000 uh, CDs that helped with uh, outreaches in that area. Um, and a lot of the time people ask me why CDs are important. Uh, most of those communities that we work among are illiterate and audio is very, very important. So we use this material a lot, a lot, like it's a non-stop demand on it. Um, even like lately, the number of CDs that we've um, given out is over 100,000 um, this year. We did have several teams from Crossroads that visited uh, the Middle East and uh, um, they gave training for the local leaders. Um, and that, that was a great help. Uh, they've also helped in, in painting and uh, uh, developing one of the schools we worked with. Um, and one of the other things that I feel like is very, uh, and was very useful to us is the, uh, this partnership is not only with programs, but with the prayer that uh, uh, we've been having support from the church here to the work that has been done in the Middle East. We've also partnered with uh, Crossroads with um, a sponsorship program among refugees, uh, which was a lot of work on uh, the behalf of Crossroads. They did a great job. Um, we've also, like, I think we partnered with five local churches here, and that is not a small thing to do. I know it takes a lot of effort in that. And um, those people came from the Middle East. They were all uh, working with Bridges of Love over there. And that partnership 
you know, brought fruits uh, by bringing those families to safety and to have uh, a new life, a new beginning for them. Um, we also have another partnership that is still going on uh, with uh, Crossroads, which is supporting local missionaries that uh, work there and do work among uh, refugees. And uh, we're very, very grateful for that because, uh, because of the economical situation and the ongoing support of uh, uh, Crossroads for those people, for those families, they're able to continue to do their work among the refugees. If I can just summarize the situation in the Middle East at this stage is very difficult, very hard. Um, people have lost more than, say, 85 to 90 percent of their values, of their money, of their savings. Let's say you're a person who you've worked all your life and um, you had savings in the bank. Um, this is your retirement money. You've lost. 85% value of your money right now. That's what's happening in the Middle East. It's all over. And, um, and that affected several countries. Uh, having said that, uh, people don't have even access to their money. Even if you have money in the bank, you can't take your money out of the bank. So um, everything there became so expensive. Um, even like a small grocery shopping that you can go and get just some uh, bread and some small things like for a family, um, it's very, very expensive. Um, because of the partnership we have with Crossroads, we are able to send those uh, money uh, right away to those families and uh, that uh, Crossroads supports directly. And, and that goes straight to them with, um, with providing. I'll give you an example on how those missionaries live. And why is it hard on them also as well when, when they are just ministering to people? And uh, for example, a, a normal day would be like um, they have a list of people that they would like to go and visit, for example. So when, when uh, this, uh, this person goes with his wife or, you know, uh, with his team to go and visit this family, for example, and they go in, in houses that uh, barely have nothing in it and they see the poverty of people and they see a family of five or six that have nothing they don't they don't even have anything to eat their fridges are empty um, it's a hard situation it's uh, emotionally it drains them down and it's it's one of the things when I'm asked uh, what do you think it would be helpful um, I know sometimes uh, money is a good thing and it of course it can help in ministry but also the uh, the prayer and the, uh, the support that the person will have is very important because when they go and visit, they, um, they're emotionally drained because they see, this, they see this on a daily basis. And um, all what they can do is pray with those people. That's how they spend their time is in prayer. But at the same time, when you see people that are hungry, you can't just sit and do nothing. You have to you know, do something about it. And that's, that's how their hearts are like just to serve and to help people. Um, and of course, with the difficult situation in, in, in the country, like they can do as much as they can with whatever they have. And even if they have to do it, do it out of their own pockets. And that's what basically happens most of the time. They end up themselves, they can't reach the end of the month because they're helping others. And which is, I appreciate this wonderful and beautiful hearts they have. And we've seen that with most of our uh, missionaries that work with bridges of love in that in the Middle East. It's always there's always something exciting in the Middle East. Uh, the Middle East is a country of excitement. Let's put it this way. Um, the exciting things is uh, like even lately we've been seeing that we've been um, having new opportunities open to us. Uh, we've been having uh, opportunities to serve among special need kids. Um, we've never had this opportunity before. Now we do have. Um, and when we started doing that, it opened another door to work with the elderly people. And uh, we were asked if we can help and visit those people. And again, you go back to the same point of when you go and you visit people. And that is something uh, we've taken on us as, uh, as a non-for-profit to say, like, we don't want to stay in our own world. We wanted to go out to people. We want to reach out. And that, 
that is now becoming our first and our priority is to go out and to reach those people. Uh, we have also ministries among the uh, women that it's been growing like tremendously. And uh, we are now looking forward for summer to do a special training among, we have uh, a number over, I think over 95 people who got registered now. Uh, 95 women that would like to be trained and be part of the uh, outreach program. Uh, we have over 300 kids that are registered for the summer camps. Um, of course, with the COVID situation, we don't know yet how things will be, uh, but um, that is all part of the summer program. Uh, we also have the men's group. We have several, we have at least 12 groups that are uh, going to be launched in the Middle East. Um, so this is all exciting for us. One of the important things that we've seen as Bridges of Love is we don't want to create, we, want to, we don't want to duplicate the work. And most of the time, um, we've seen a lot of duplication. Um, we look forward to do, it's the same partnership we have between us and Crossroads. Crossroads is not the one doing the work in the Middle East but they work alongside to do uh, alongside the workers for the work to be done it's that's our vision is we go with what can we do to help and this is who we are we don't want to just go there by creating we're not a um, uh, an organization that we're not a relief agency we don't want to be a relief agency we want to be there to support the locals and see what can we do to make them go forward. And once the, we see that the work is being done and they can move on their own, we move to a new area, a new, a new place. And that's why we have over 30 plus people working in the Middle East just to, do, um, just to support them and say, what can we do to help you? I believe the most important thing is prayer. When I used to ask uh, my dad, like, uh, how do you do this? Like, how were you able to go uh, in the Middle East or the Gulf or start this? Or like, how can you do this? He would always look at me and say, it's all about prayer. And at that time, I honestly never, uh, okay, I, I heard it, but I never took it as, I would say, serious until myself, I started in ministry. And I've seen that the only way you can do that is through prayers. And the first thing I ask our partners is to pray for, pray for the people. Pray that they have, first of all, the courage to continue what they're doing because it's easy for us to be here saying about things and ministry or work or how to do this. But for them, it's more, there's emotional, it, it, they're, they're more into it. They're 100% into the work. So I always ask people to pray. Prayer is very important, and especially that we're going into now the fasting month of Ramadan. I, I, I really would like to ask people to pray more. Pray for those people. Pray for, uh, so that um, uh, God can use those missionaries to be doing what, what He wants them to do, to be effective. It's not about us. It's just about His kingdom. And I believe prayer can move mountains. And, and um, I strongly advise, like, please pray for those missionaries. Mm -hmm.